This video will introduce the XYZ file format for molecular coordinates. So before we get going too much into computational chemistry, we have a little bit of housekeeping to do to introduce some concepts just to make sure we're all on the same page for these things. So first of all, this XYZ file format. So I'm going to have some file name. And in general, what I want in my file names are things like no spaces, no slashes, no special characters. Typically, if you have something where you have multiple words in a row, you'll either just uh, put them one right after another, or you might separate them by underscores or capitalizing the first letter of uh, each word. So I have some file name, and then I have the file extension, which typically for XYZ files, as you might guess, is .xyz. It's not absolutely necessary that you do that. Uh, often computational chemistry uh, is being done on Linux type operating systems. But if you're working especially on a Microsoft operating system like Windows, uh, they tend to be a little bit more, uh, uh, how shall we say, strict about treating the file name extensions. So if you have the choice, just go ahead and name it .xyz. All right, so what should we see on the inside of this file? So we're gonna see first on the first line, there's only one thing and that is an integer number. That is the number of atoms in our molecule. So in this example, this is water. Water has three atoms, OHH. So I say three for the number of atoms on that first line. The second line is then a comment. Usually whatever system you have is going to ignore whatever's on this line. So you might use it to make a note to yourself. You might leave it completely blank, but this comment line can be anything that you like. All right, then starting with the third line and thereafter, we have atom records. So we have uh, four columns in each of those uh, rows, and each of those rows is going to contain the first column is going to be the atomic symbol. So in most cases, that's gonna be just what's the atomic element, whether it's oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, uh, tungsten, etc. So here it's an oxygen. The fourth and fifth lines here, those two atoms are hydrogens. And then that's followed by three uh, floating point numbers in the, what I would call floating point numbers in computer science. It's some uh, number with a decimal followed by some digits. So uh, second, third, and fourth here, those are the coordinates of the X, Y, and Z dimensions of that atom respectively. So for second through fourth column are atomic coordinates. Usually the unit of these are going to be angstroms, but the unit might also sometimes be bohr or atomic units. Uh, just check whatever program you're using uh, if it mentions whether it's expecting those in either angstroms or bohr, and whether it's outputting those in angstrom or bohr. Okay, so this type of a representation of a molecule would be called Cartesian coordinates, or it might be called X, Y, Z coordinates in three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. So we have N atoms, as I mentioned. Each of those atoms we're representing as a single point particle. So a point particle has some uh, location in 3D space. Usually your nucleus is specified by whatever your atomic symbol is. So here the oxygen would be uh, eight protons, the H would be one proton, etc. So if you have n atoms, each of them has an x, y, and z coordinate. So you have three n total coordinates. All right, and what out of those three n coordinates, actually many of them are redundant. They don't convey any new information because we could move the molecule uh, relative to where we started. So for example, we could translate the molecule in X, Y, and Z. We could add a constant factor or subtract a constant factor to each of these columns and we would still have the same molecule. Or we could have three rotations. If you're a, if you're a, a nonlinear molecule, you have three rotations, one around each of the axes. And if you're linear, you have two. So if you are nonlinear, you have three N minus six, what we call unique coordinates or internal degrees of freedom. And if you are linear, you would have had 3n minus 5 of those. So some examples of these, if I look in my uh, Jupyter notebook, which we're 
uh, going to introduce a few videos down the line. So if I look, for example, at benzene here, if this file will do me the favor of opening. So here we have 12 atoms. My comment, I just put the name of the molecule. And then lines 3 through 14 are atom records of the six carbons, six hydrogens, and all of their XYZ coordinates. This particular set of XYZ coordinates, if I display that in VMD, which we're going to discuss a few videos down the line as well. See, I have that. That's the same file that I read in, 12 atoms. And then I can do things like rotate that and look at it and do all sorts of stuff that I, that I might want to do with that molecule. Okay, um, if you want to look at some of these on my uh, GitHub page, github.com slash tmpchem, if you go into the computational chemistry repository, that'll open, go down to the geom subdirectory, and then XYZ. Then I've got a ton of XYZ files that you can use in there for the uh, for examining in the couple videos that we're going to be taking a look at here. All right, so that is the basis basics of XYZ coordinates, which we use to represent the Cartesian coordinates in a file for a given molecule.